We're here at Amigo's Gym in Orpington, Archie Sharp. How are you, sir? Yeah, good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, very good. Um, last time we spoke to you, it wasn't that long ago, um, and you reported that you were recovering from an injury slash condition which you were working towards getting ready for April 27th at Wembley. Progress, looking at your training, looks like you're doing okay, but progress report, please. Yeah, um, it's going well, thanks. So like I say, 27th of April, we're, we're back out and um, everything seems to be in good shape. So looking forward to getting back and getting back in the mix of the big fights. Eight rounder. Yeah. Are you, is part of you thinking, after coming off such a big personal fight last time, part of you thinking, I want to go again into another big one? Yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm, you know I mean? I'm gutted, I'm not in the big fight. Um, in April, but you know what I mean, it is what it is. I just got to get on with it, get back healthy, fit, and ready for the big fights in the summer. I suppose it's one where you've got to be a little bit sensible and be careful not to overlook anything or take anything for granted. Exactly that. I just got to go in there on the 27th. Just, I know I've got a job to do. Um, I just work on what I need to work on and get in and move on. Also, since we last spoke to you, the British title has been defended again by Sam Bowen against Jordan McCorry up in Leicester. We spoke before that fight. Have you taken anything from it, had a look at it? I'd be lying if I've said I've, I even watched the show. Um, I haven't seen any of it. I owe Sam obviously one. Um, it's a good luck with him, so yeah, he done what he needed to do. Shocking, yeah, actually, not watching the show when you're divisional rivals. Yeah, exactly that. Well, like I say, it's just... Uh, I feel I can't remember what was Saturday. I was out with the kids, so it's the last thing that was on my mind was boxing then. So <laughs> Did you find out the score quite quickly or the result quite quickly? Um, do you know what? I think I found out on the Monday when I come into the gym. Honestly, I wasn't even like I say, the fight's gonna happen and at the minute I've got a job to do on the twenty seventh of April, so I don't need to go around studying Sam. I've seen Sam, I know he's a good fighter. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't watched it. Right, I'm going to turn back to time you, Archie. Something we haven't discussed on camera before is an element of your preparation, which I think is fairly unique to you. I haven't heard of many other British boxers who employ these techniques. And is that is of mind coaching. Now, it plays a big part for you, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Like I say, my mind is so strong now because of uh, my mind coach, Linda Keane, who I work with. Um, I see her before I turned pro and I was in a bit of a bad place towards the end of the amateurs. Um, things weren't great for me, so I see her... Um, so now I do the mental health side of things as well, so I go and do workshops with young kids and adults just to talk about mental health because it all plays a part and yeah, like I say, for that Woodstock fight, my mind was so strong and as you can see, I got the result that I knew I was going to get. Can you explain how it works in practical terms? Um, so basically, um, what I do is I just program things into my mind of what I see and uh, I won't go into too much detail because it is my secret weapon, but uh, but basically, I just make sure I'm in great preparation fit, uh, physically and mentally. Is it a case of, say, motivational tapes on a loop, that sort of thing, while you're running or on the treadmill? Um, yeah, they're pro basically, like I say, I get programmes made for myself for them particular fights. Um, and I use it with everyday life, with everything. Um, like I say, I do the, uh, the mental health side of things as well. So it's just all about my mind being in a strong place, in a good place. How much did that help you? Because you, in some sorts of ways, you stepped into the unknown in the Woodstock fight, in the fact that you had someone in your face, he was hostile, he thought he was going to beat you, and he started maybe giving it a little bit of lip at press conferences. Did it play a part in giving you the mental strength to sort of overcome that? Um, or just ignore it? To be honest with you, I, I, I was mentally in control from the first press conference all the way to the end of the fight. I've always, even when I was coming back at him a little bit and we was at the workout shop um, doing the workouts, public workout, I was always in control even though they were trying to talk me and get on my case, I was never out of control, I knew exactly what I needed to do and like I say when I come into that ring on uh, on fight night I was so, you watched back the tapes, I was so um, zoned in to what I needed to do and is that, I got the job done. How much part of your week does this mind work take? Is it an ongoing process? Is it once a week, once a month, when you need it? I use it every day. Like I say, I use it for everyday living. I use it with my kids. I use it with everything. Um, so I, I constantly work on my mind every single day. So no one realises how powerful the mind is and I use it to its full potential. So, Is it something you'll employ throughout your whole career as an ongoing process? Or is it maybe something you'll take into later life just to give you strength of mind? Yeah, of course. It's something I'll do every single day for the rest of my life. Um, and helping other people with it, I think it's a great thing. No one realises how, like I say, how strong it is, 
and it's um, it's incredible to see what you can do when you're in when your state of mind is so strong. How much of your day does that side of things take up? Um, I just use it every, like, when I'm driving, and I just make sure I'm positive all through the day. So. I must say, from knowing you for a couple of three years now, I mean, your confidence and stature does appear to have grown. Does it feel that way to you? Yeah, hundred. Because I know, I know what um, how good I am as a fighter, and I now believe it every single day. I mentally believe it, um, and I know exactly where I want to be at the end of this sport, and I know where I'm going in the next 18 months. I've got a little plan, so I'll be at world world title fights. Within 18 months. Within 18 months, I'll be at world level, mixing with them big top fighters. Yeah, for sure. How much has the winning of that first belt fueled you? That's the thing. Now I've got my first belt, and I I watched the fight back plenty of times, and I know I'm 100%. There's, there's loads more to come. That wasn't me at my best. Um, I've done what I had to do that night, and uh, so much more to come. I'm looking forward to showing everyone and all the fans how much more there is. I mean, that was your breakout fight, so I mean, it is supposedly the first of many. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's my first big step up. Um, I handled it well. I thought I won by a lot more than what the scorecards had me on the night. Um, it was supposed to be, I was, like I say, I was the underdog for that fight. And I knew, I knew that I was going to win that fight, and I did. This cunning plan for the next 18 months, is there any way you can let us in on it? Just keep winning. Keep put, once I get this fight out of the way, with, from now on, as long as everything goes right, no injuries and everything, I'll be in big fights and constantly title fights from now on. Does the British title appeal greatly? Yeah, of course, that British title fight's going to happen for sure. I keep saying it, and I know Sam's going to want to have it at some point. It makes sense. Um, it's just a matter of when it will happen. It could be at the end of the year. It could be next year. No one knows, it's, but it's definitely going to be on the cards. Great fight. Yeah, it's going to be a great fight. I'm looking forward to it when it does happen. But at the minute, I've got my plan of what I need to do. Um, so I'm going to stick with MTK. They, they manage me well and my team. Um, so, yeah, we know exactly what we want to do. And now it's just about going on doing it. Interestingly, last time we spoke, you quite randomly threw in the name of Lee Selby. Is that something that's been on your mind, something that just tickles your fancy? Yeah, they're, they're definitely fights that I want, and I know I'm ready for them fights. Um, obviously, for the business side of things, I know you probably ain't going to be interested in it, but I know that I'm, I'm at that level and beyond that level. Do you look at his style? I mean, he's a pure boxer, isn't he? I and mean, that's your game. I mean, how would the styles mesh in to fight like that? I ain't just saying it, but I don't feel like there's any fighter out there who can who can just get back on the back foot and try and outbox me. I really don't think there's a fighter out there who can outbox me. Another one, a name that you've thrown out there yourself occasionally, not so much recently, but it popped up on social media a little while back. Ryan Garcia, what's the story behind that? Yeah, Garcia is a good fighter, and, just, and like I say, like they're the fights everyone's talking about, the fighters everyone's talking about, and I know I'm great and I can be amongst them fighters. I know he's gone up to lightweight now anyway, so at the minute it's not going to be happening. I'm standing, at, I'm standing at super featherweight and I'm going to clear that division up before I go up first. So. Any chance of you um, following any Garcia's footsteps and becoming an Instagram world champion? I mean, it's, it's done him the world of good, isn't it? Yeah, he's doing well, but I, I like to do my talking in the ring. Do you know what I mean? I want to be in the big fights and, I, and I'll do my talking in the ring and I'll win them. How's life changed for you? I mean, you come from this sort of young prospect. Now you're a father, your own place. I mean, it really counts now because it is your living, isn't it? You've got to put food on the table. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is my living. This is what I've been doing since I was seven. But now, like, um, I've turned pro and it's, it's an everyday thing. I love it. I enjoy it. I enjoy doing what I do. I love the sport. Um, and I'm looking forward to going on doing big things. Do you think people are actually properly aware of your amateur background because you've stepped out before an Olympic cycle? People that maybe don't appreciate what you actually won, where you travelled to, who you fought during your amateur days? Yeah, my amateur, I think it plays a big part, yeah, for sure, because um, like I said, I won, I think it was off the top of my head, I think seven or eight national titles. I beat Olympian fighters, like I say. So I've been amongst the best amateurs, and I'm a great believer that great fighters all come from a great amateur background. Do you know what I mean? Ricky Atten, Floyd Mayover, they're all great fighters, and they all come from a great amateur background. Finally, Archie, I'm going to drop you down away and ask for a prediction. We've got Josh Warrington defending his world title, IBF world title, against Kid Galahad in Leeds on June the 15th. Um, your prediction, and how do you break down that fight? Well, I must say, Warrington has been doing really well at the minute. I didn't expect him to beat Frampton how he did, so um, he 
super shot me there. He's a good, great fighter. Um, Kid Galahad's also a great fighter. It's going to be a good fight. Looking forward to it. If Kid Galahad can stick to his boxing and keep him away, I think Galahad on points. But if Warrington is just too strong and, and roughs him up too much, then I think Warrington can end up stopping him. Which one's going to happen, in your opinion? In my opinion, um, I'm going to I'm going to go with Kid Galahad. Really? Yeah, I'm going to go with Kid Galahad. Interesting, Archie. Thank you very much. Thank you.